So today we want to talk about pasture rejuvenation, which is always a timely topic no matter what time of the year, because pastures certainly need to be looked at uh, once we seed those pastures and the decrease in yield and decrease in fertility. Are there alternatives? Are there techniques out there that we can look at to increase that yield or increase that quality? So what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about why we would rejuvenate. What are the reasons why? You certainly have to have some goals and objectives. Look at talk a little bit about some of the options of rejuvenation that are out there for producers. We'll talk a little bit as well about some of the recent studies here at Western Beef Development Center and look at some of the outcomes of those research trials. So why would you rejuvenate? You need to evaluate the existing vegetation and some of the options for improvement. You want to look for desirable vegetation that's out there. Is there presence of those seeded productive species that you originally put in as a pasture species and is there invasive species out there or undesirable type vegetation? So you want to look at the, different, the four different particular options that might be out there. Do we want to manipulate uh, those particular stands or do we want to manage them for grazing and hay harvest? Do we want to manipulate them with fertility, with mechanical aeration, with herbicide or winter feeding programs? Or do we want to enhance what's out there using a sod seed or an overseed technique? Or finally, do we want to be drastic and replace the existing stand by breaking and reseeding or possibly coming in with a sod seeding program? What are the questions you want to consider? You certainly have to have an objective when you're going to look at rejuvenation, especially of a perennial stand because it's going to last a long, long time and you want to look at your input costs for that whole program. So what are your objectives? Do you want to increase the yield, the biomass per acre out there? Do you want to increase the fertility, presence of those soil nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus? Or do you want to do a drastic rejuvenation where you're going to change those species that are out there from a grass species to a legume? And how long will that effect last? Will it last for a short term, a one year program, or possibly would be there some carryover so you'll see those effects lasting into that three or four year time span? What's the cost to do that? That's certainly very important to a producer. And what's the return on investment? Or is there specialized equipment? Do you need to go out and find sod seeding equipment? Can you use uh, typical harrows or cultivators that are out there? to look at a mechanical application and as well you need to know the soil type. What's the soil structure of your particular pasture, the texture, the fertility. So what are some of the options that are out there for producers? We call these alternative rejuvenation techniques. As I mentioned the typical one, the, the drastic one would be to break up and reseed that old stand. That's certainly going to cost, be a high input cost. We figure generally between $300 $400 per acre to turn that particular stand around, to break it up, reseed, come in with an annual crop. As well, you're probably going to lose that particular biomass in that grazing season. So breaking and reseeding is certainly probably the most drastic rejuvenation technique and one that a producer needs to think long and hard about. Some of the other options include fertility, either inorganic sources of fertilizer or organic sources like livestock manure, mechanical soil disturbance using cultivators or shanks or some types of knives going out there and disturbing that soil surface profile, sod seeding as well as an option, overseeding. If you're going to go out there and do these rejuvenation techniques, certainly you want to come back in with a good grazing management program. And finally, is there some strategies out there to manage our beef herds or our winter grazing programs and, and leaving those nutrients behind, those livestock manure nutrients, on those certain places on your farm or your ranch? So you need to go out there and assess your pasture. You need to look at what's out there in terms of plant composition. Is there presence of those, those productive species that were originally seeded four, five, six, ten years ago? For example, is there at least 30, 40, 50 percent of those productive species present? Is there a high percentage of undesirables or invasive species? The main composition of the pasture would be, say, thistles or pasture sage. Then probably a break and reseed option would be out there. If there's presence of those productive species, possibly a fertility program or mechanical disturbance program might suffice. Are those desirable species out there? Can we impose a shift? with a fertility program, application of nitrogen or phosphorus, and then you need to look at the hydrological function and the nutrient cycling program that's out there as well. Is it a stable site? Is there some solanistic soils out there? Is there presence of noxious weeds? Or possibly is there encroachment of aspen poplar, like a woody regrowth problem, where possibly a break and reseed option would be the, would be the ticket.
So one of the options of rejuvenation is breaking and reseeding that existing stand. It's the most effective method in changing the composition that's out there. Certainly you can change from a grass to a legume component or possibly a mixed pasture of grass legume. But there is the potential here now for wind erosion, soil erosion, and a producer needs to know it's the most costly. You need to go out there, break that stand up, cultivate it, get that seed bed in a situation where you want to reseed, plus the loss of that particular biomass in that particular seeding year and the ability not to graze that until the second year after you seed that new perennial going in there. What are some of the advantages, however, is a certain release of nutrients for the subsequent crop. It's also very useful if you have aspen encroachment or brush encroachment from woody species, presence of invasive weeds, like I mentioned, noxious weeds, as well as it may uh, be a great option to completely change the forage type from one grass species to a more productive grass species or possibly from a grass to a legume or a mix of grass legume. When we're talking about fertility we need to look at two sources either inorganic sources of fertilizer or organic sources of fertilizer. Is there ways we can go out there and spread urea or ammonium nitrate uh, certainly look at the input cost per acre. It's the quickest way to increase biomass or yield, especially on a grass type stand because we know grass loves nitrogen. So certainly application of, of a fertility program, either a single application or a split application in that mid-summer time period and look at the carryover effects. Nutrients are applied will depend on the soil type and the vegetation out there. As I mentioned, grasses love nitrogen and legumes certainly love phosphorus and sulfur. And as well, if you're going to use fertilizer, you need to certainly time it with these small showers or some type of a rain afterwards because application of a granular fertilizer is very moisture dependent. It's going to take a good shower or some rain after you apply that fertilizer to dissolve those granules and percolate those nutrients down into that root zone. And usually, usually depending on how much you apply, it's a one-year response. From our experience here at Western Beef Development Center, we found that if you apply less than 50 pounds an acre, you probably won't see a response that's going to cover off your input cost. So we're suggesting that probably anything greater than 50 pounds an acre or up, depending on their soil test results, uh, certainly would be the amount you want to put out there. So looking at some historic data done here in Saskatchewan, we can see that in fact there was five different soil sites look, looked at in terms of this particular study. Swift Current with the brown soil zone, Scott with the dark brown, Indian Head with the black soil, Loon Lake with the gray and Pathlow with the gray. And in each of these forages had different grasses or, or grass legume mixtures under them. And you can see the different fertilizer rates there as well as the response. When you add nitrogen by itself, you'll see a nearly a doubling in terms of biomass increase, but you'll see a two and a half to three times increase when you add that phosphorus with the nitrogen, and we call that a synergistic effect, because in fact you're actually supplying more than one nutrient to those particular pasture species, and thus you'll see that increased response and in yield. As I mentioned, how much do you want to put out there? It's important to go out and soil test. You certainly want to do that. You want to be prudent in terms of how much you're going to put on for NPKRS. So go out and do a soil test before you're going to use a fertility program to find out levels of nitrogen, levels of phosphorus, potassium and sulfur depending on your soil type or your soil zone. So looking at the typical yield response of tame grasses to nitrogen fertilizer, you can see from this data the greatest benefit was up to 100 pounds of nitrogen, actual nitrogen per acre or roughly 112 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. You can see a curvilinear response where the 56 kilo of N per hectare certainly saw an increase yield over the control. Uh, 112 saw a further increase, but once we put on 160 kilo, 168 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, there was no added benefit. And so therefore we can conclude that the greatest benefit of putting on that nitrogen based on soil test results was up to 100 pounds of actual nitrogen per acre. This particular slide is just looking at those four application rates on those test plots. So this is again some long-term research uh, done in Northeast Saskatchewan looking at the effect of different application rates of nitrogen by itself or nitrogen with phosphorus or a blend of all four, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and sulfur. So this particular slide is just showing you the expected dry matter increase in terms of pounds of nitrogen applied. You can see the different rates, 25, 50, 75 and 100 pounds of nitrogen and the expected actual amounts of pounds of dry matter per pound of nitrogen applied. 
So what do we consider when we're looking at fertility as a rejuvenation option? As I mentioned previously, make sure you go out there and soil test. Find out the levels of nutrients in that particular pasture before you're going to go out and apply either inorganic or organic sources of fertilizer. You need to go out and pencil the costs. and You need to look at the benefits and you need to study these very effectively to see what that's going to cost you as a producer. You want to typically apply that fertility when temperatures are low and the potential for a rainfall or moisture is quite high. Use a balance of nutrients. As I mentioned, it's better to see a greater response of a nitrogen phosphorus application versus nitrogen alone, or possibly look at a portion of acreage and fertilize those with a higher rate to see that added response or the bang for your buck.